Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. And yes, she's back. Anna Kelly, how are you doing? I'm great. It's great to be back. I've missed our conversations. Yeah, it's been two weeks. My Wednesday mornings were just not the same. I got to tell you. Oh, thanks. (laughs) Hey, something I thought we should do, because you and I actually have looked at this spreadsheet, but I think it was like nine months ago. Uh, We've added to it. It's now the 52-year spreadsheet versus the 50-year spreadsheet. But actually, I want to go back and look at the 70s. I think there is more and more people are now appreciating that my early call that we're repeating the 70s is... um, more accurate than not. So I thought maybe we should go back, look at the seventies, lots of data there. Not sure where you and I will take it, but let me pull it up. You ready? Yes. I'm so glad. Let me tell you about two weeks ago, I said, I need to get Michael to update the spreadsheet to look at affordability because where we were very affordable before, I don't think we are. And I've been actually studying the sixties and seventies pretty extensively. So I'm excited to look at the numbers again with a lens to what I've learned about our history. Awesome. So I've got the 70s up here. We will look at 2022 in a minute. Uh, But when I kind of look at the 70s, the first thing I kind of go to is interest rates, because we clearly have the Fed doing what the Fed is doing, right? I think that's, that's, that's where I went first. And just to level set everybody, that's row seven. And again, folks, I give this spreadsheet away for free. All the data sources are linked here. So if you want to argue the data, don't look at me, look at these sources. I'm not passing judgment. It's just all information. Go get it. It's in my free course link below. It's on teachable. It is all yours. So the first thing I do is I go back to the seventies, Anna, and I look at when basically Paul Volcker came in, which was 78. Um, yes. He came in in 78 and he basically started raising rates, which yes. I have on this spreadsheet as the 30 year, right? I don't have the fed funds rate. I just have the 30 year mortgage, but you can see very quickly when Volcker came in, he raised rates. It went up. What is that? Uh, like 150 basis points the first year, then 250 basis points. So this caught my attention. Yes. 7980, right? Cause that's basically what happened to us. 30 year was three. Now it's five and a half. That's still, that's 250 basis points. Yes. So that's the first thing I looked at. And then I looked at house appreciation, which shockingly still kept running. Even if you go out another year, Yes. And this was 10 years into an inflationary environment. Yeah, this is this because, again, what people don't realize, I forget his name. I, I researched him, but he he was he was known as the Fed president that um, he's called the great inflation. That's his nickname, like like uh, Jerome Powell's transitory. Right. That's going to be his name. Right. Uh, um, but yeah, Paul Varku came in and basically said, you guys are an idiot. You're not because you're, you're not fixing the problem. Americans are suffering. Yeah, I think it was Burns before him. Yeah, Bar- Arthur Burns. Yes. I love it. But it's very interesting. What what but look what happened to transactions. So we have new homes. This is new data you didn't see last time. New homes were selling, they sold 700,000 and then we sold 3.8. But look at what happened just 2 years later. Almost cut in half. Yes. Right? But, At that point, it's like crying uncle, right? Yeah. It, you, you, so again, folks, I told, told you today on the daily financial news, I do not see a national housing crash in price. I see 25 to 50% fall in transactions. Yes. Because of this data. And it says yes. it's absolutely possible. And when transactions fall, what people don't realize is that has a trickle down effect on the entire economy, Right. Because fewer people, there's less building supplies, less jobs for people in the construction industry, less furniture sold, less lawn equipment sold. So it it, it has a trickle down effect on on the entire economy. Yeah. When you look at housing, depending on who you talk to, it's somewhere between 15 and 18% housing related activity, right? Because you do furniture and washers and dryers, you can kind of, yeah, it's it's a, it's a decent part of our economy and it's, it's, it's coming down. Yes. Yeah. The other thing I've looked at here was um, the unemployment rate, right? Because again, I've told people, I think the unemployment rate's going to double by the end of next year. People don't like to hear it, but it is. We're at 3.6. I suspect it goes down a little bit and then bounces up. Again, you raise rates and unemployment goes, that's what's supposed to happen, right? You raise right. rate, can't borrow as much money, the economy, it's, it happens. Absolutely. Just like we said, I mean, economy slows down. So people buy fewer things because it's more expensive. 
-hmm. when they buy fewer things, companies can't charge as much. Mm -hmm. They, they tick up in supply and they start laying people off and lowering people's wages. And that's exactly what leads to a recession. Yeah. So then we talk about inflation, right? CPI. Again, we got the read this morning at 8.3. The experts called eight. I called eight two. So I'm going to call myself a win on that. I was closer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have CPI kind of in the early 70s, bouncing around low single digits. It spikes to in 74, kind of 75. It then goes back. What this is what um, Christopher Waller, I think his name is, Fed president, said we're not going to repeat the 70s. What happened is they thought they broke it. So yeah. they backed off and then it, it reinvigorated itself and got worse. And yeah. this is, this is called a double dip recession. And this is so important because most people don't understand that, you know, the fed kind of talks fed speak yep. and you're just like, okay, we're not going to repeat the same problems. Some people think that means, oh, we're not going to have to raise rates quite as high. Yeah. It's like, no, it means that we, we don't want to, you know, do it and then pull off and say, okay, things are better. And then find out that it's worse and have to do it again. Yeah, this is a really good graphic of that. And then lastly, something I've introduced to my audience, it was it hasn't been talked about since Jimmy Carter is the misery index. It's actually a rather simple formula. It's simply unemployment U3 plus CPI. And I think it's about 16% right now, isn't it? Or a little higher? Uh, no, it's it, well, we can do it together. So CPI came out today at 8.2. The, the unemployment rate U3 was 3.6. So what is that? 12.8? 12.8. Okay. 12.8. Uh, but anything over double digits is bad. Single digits, fine. Double digits, bad. In the teens, bad. Right? That's kind of historic number. So we're we're bumping up against the teens. Uh, and again, unemployment's three point six. It's not going much lower. So uh, watch out. Right. But you can see the misery index uh, was not good. Anything in the teens is bad. It was pretty much. Oh my God, twenty percent. What year was that? Oh, jeez. That's crazy. Nineteen eighty. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, bad, bad, bad. I, that might have and been that's kind of when things started really coming to a head, right? You started seeing real estate values start to come down, commercial, farmland, oil. Mm -hmm. And then you started to see the collapse of the savings and loan, mm -hmm. you know, banks starting in the late 70s through the early 80s. Yeah, look at 82. Because a variable rate debt. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, look at 82. 82, we were 50% of what we did in 78. 412 wow. housing, 1.9 versus, again, what yeah. I want people to take from this is a lot of people are very kind of microwave or social media oriented. They expect like, like all the YouTubers calling for a housing crash this summer. Are you freaking kidding me? That is not how real estate moves. It is no, not, more, not yet. It is far more. I, yeah, it's the real estate does not. We are not trading crypto here, guys. It it doesn't move that fast. Anybody who's calling a fifty percent crash in housing by the summer should be an immediate unfollow. Absolutely, yeah. We're conservative, but we're not crazy, right? Yeah, it's not <laughs> mathematic. You won't even have housing close at this point until like July. So yeah. It's like Man, it's crazy. Yeah. And to the point of our first video, we talked a little bit about supply and demand, right? People think, oh, there's so little supply versus demand. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just going to keep prices booming. It mm -hmm. does for a little while, but look at, at your house appreciation. Mm -hmm. And even though the transactions dropped, the values didn't drop substantially. They just slowed growth. Mm -hmm. And this was during a time when baby boomers were really buying a lot of houses. They were entering the labor force. They were spending a lot more money than previous generations. And that's part of why you had high inflation, because you had this mass entrance into the labor, labor force, this mass increase in the number of people reaching home buyer ages mm -hmm. and spending, you know, peak consumer spending ages that led to this inflation. They kept buying houses, but they sure bought a whole lot less houses, despite the fact that it was undersupplied and a lot of people wanting homes. So don't think that just having an undersupply nationally means that just as many houses will trade or that values will not start coming down a bit. Yeah, totally agree. Other numbers that I saw on this, uh, we could talk about uh, the S&P 500. Again, people in the stock market, right? It started the 70s at 90. Uh, by 76, it was up, I don't know, what is that? 5%, maybe 6%. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was back at 90 and 78, kind of a flat eight years. Yeah. So again. Let's look at home and wages yeah. adjusted by CPI. I'm assuming that's what it is, right? Yep. That's what these two are. Yeah. 
again, what we've done again, when I'm trying to educate my, my channel on different terms, right? There's nominal in real. Yeah. When you, when you see real, that means it's adjusted for CPI, basically the nominal minus CPI. So yes. we, we've, this is new. We, we did not have this when we looked at this last time. Yes. So again, you could see, um, yeah, I'll let you, where do you want to go? Sure. So yeah, I'm just looking at the, the early seventies, you know, when adjusted by CPI, home prices were going up, but not substantially. Correct, um, correct. But yeah, if you look at the, you know, most of the seventies housing prices were actually down a little bit when you adjust it by inflation. So people that think that housing prices always only go up, mm -hmm. if you're not looking at the inflation adjusted number, that may generally be true other than for some big, you know, bubbles like in 2008 and 2009, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, but, you know, housing over, over time goes up about three to 4%, but there's definitely years where we had depreciation yeah. on an inflation adjusted basis. And I yeah. think that's important to recognize. So, so let's just, let's actually hammer this home. So let's take home appreciation, folks. This is what's called the nominal number. Yes. This is what Case Schiller is going to report. It looks always positive through it all looks, the seven. Oh, it looks woohoo! Yeah, it had a sixteen year. So the so again, ten years, 1970, 1979, The cumulative sum is eighty two percent. The average is eight point two percent. That's not bad, right? Right. So, so that's the nominal inflation. And again, yeah. folks, this spreadsheet is free. I can't believe we get this away for free. Yes, I love it. So Best now spreadsheet I've seen. Yep. So now we have home appreciation minus CPI for the same period. Cumulative, it is still positive. It's not 80, it's 11. And the average is not eight, it's one. Yes. Yes. With a couple of years of, of negative and then going into the 80s, you know, yeah, we'll, you, you had had things kind of peak and it, it gets worse. Yeah, we'll do the 80s in a minute. Now let's look at wages. I actually have no idea what this is going to be. So let's do the same thing. Wage growth nominal wage growth. Yes. For 10 years, we have, it went up 70%, an average of 7%, nominal. Yes. Oh, I'm yes. a little bit scared. And there's scared. so many people today that say wages are up, right? <laughs> well, wages are up, but not as much as inflation, which yeah. means you actually have a pay cut. Yes. You can't look at the fact that wages are up. So the economy's booming, unemployment's down. So the economy's booming and it can't get worse. And that's what a lot of people think. Yeah, I'm a little but bit. They're scared. not looking oh, at inflation adjusted wages. I bet it's negative. It is. It's negative. The cumulative negative or the cumulative number over a decade is negative. Let's call it 1%. The yeah. average person in the 70s, and again, I've told people the so 70s sucked. I remember the late 70s, like I'm that old, um, <laughs> was negative 0.09%. Let's call it negative 1%. Every, yeah. you, you took a pay cut every single year in the same. Yeah. Oh, that's ugly. And look at this. This is really interesting to me too. So if people are just reading the headlines that we have wage growth, we mm -hmm. have, you know, um, house prices that are going up, they feel like they're okay. Right. right? Well Consumer percent. sentiment actually stayed fairly high through a lot of mm -hmm. those years, even though on an inflation adjusted basis, their wealth was going up maybe 1% from their home. Yep. And their wages were going down almost an equal 1%. So it was flat for a decade. Yeah, this is not good. Yeah. All right, I, I just curious, I'm gonna do the same thing for the 80s because uh, I'm a little nervous. Yes. So the 80s, where are we? So the And 80s? the first few years of the 80s were definitely the worst. That's when oh, you started to have yeah. kind of the, the recessionary kick from inflation being high and, mm -hmm. and a, a big part of the savings and loan crisis. So it doesn't yeah. surprise me that, you know, sentiment on line 25 was way down. So again, what do we have in the eighties? We have home appreciation up every single year. Again, nominal. Yes. So the cumulative is 58%. The average is 5.8%. So now let's look at wages. I can only freeze one line at a time. What is wages? One line. So wages is Four. 13, I think. Oh no, that was wages. So, okay. That was wages. So wages went up 58% or 5.8%. That's line three. So housing is up here. There we go. Home appreciation. Okay, so here we go. So we got home appreciation. Home appreciation, again, there, these, it's amazing how similar these numbers are. Up 67% nominal, 6.7% average. Okay. 
So now we go back and we're going to do the next two, which are down here. So now we're going to adjust for inflation, homes and wages. Okay, so homes is the top line. This is going to be scary, I think. Do we have another name? So, so homes first. Okay, so it went up 11% or 1%. Same, same as the 70s. Housing went up nominally 1% a year for 20 yeah. years. So yeah. just above inflation. Now the one that scares me. Oh, no, this is not going to be good. I think it's oh, pretty flat. Yeah, it's actually it's up 2%. Or so over a decade, folks, congratulations, you made 2% more. 0.2% per year. Exactly. Not good. Not good. Right. 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 So again, this is all in the data. Go play with it yourself. Let's look at the last year because we didn't look at the last two years. Yes. Um, let's actually freeze the panes differently. Sorry. I, can, I don't know why I can only freeze one pane at a time, but whatever. First column. Okay. So now let's go do this. Right. Okay. So now we have 20 and uh, it's these two rows here or columns, I should say, mm -hmm. that we've added. Um, God, look at all those new homes. This is why homes are going to go down. Six point, what is that total? Six, nine. Yeah, we're going down. There's no chance. Mm -hmm. Home appreciation was 12% last year. Again, nominal. Uh, what else do we have? Wage growth. Ah, oh, wage growth was negative in 2022, yes. right? That's again, interesting. Uh, adjusted for inflation. So homes were up. Wow. They were up 8% last year or seven and a half wages down. Oh, 5%. How can that be? Interesting. Right. Interesting. Right. All so, so wages are down, but people are still paying more for a home mm -hmm. because you, I think one, you, you have a lagging, a lag of data on what's happening with wages. You have a lag of data with what's happening with, um, yeah. with well, the, inflation. It's all, it's all interest rates. Cause again, the number I have here is 2.96. Plus you can get a house with much less down money, right? Exactly. Yep. Which exactly. boosts, boosts those transactions and the value. Yeah. Yeah. So folks, uh, all I got to say is this spreadsheet clearly indicates to me, we, the, again, Greg Dickerson, who I speak to on Monday has this saying that I repeat now almost every episode, good times never last bad times. Never last folks. The party's over. Winter is here. Winners generally aren't as long, right? Bull markets are longer than bear markets, but bear markets are bad. We're heading to a recession on any closing thoughts on all of this. You know, I just I, I think that it's really good to see the big picture. And when we think about investments, we have to think about both the long term and the short term. Right. So don't give up on real estate forever or investing forever. Right. Things will bounce back and they generally do. Um, but we also have to lower our expectation of real returns on an inflation adjusted basis. And yeah. you don't want to be buying if you think you don't want to be buying top dollar with high interest rates mm -hmm. during times of, of high inflation, especially if wages are already coming down. Yep. Um, yep. You just need to be careful. And then the last thing I've just noted, uh, home appreciation over 52 years adjusted for CPI up 1.2%, almost 1.3. Wow. 52 years, the average wow. home goes up about 1% a year above inflation. Right. But again, people aren't looking at that inflation number. So we feel mm -hmm. much more wealthy on paper when we look at our wages and when we look at the home values. But when we look at wages and we look at home appreciation on an inflation adjusted basis, we're really just barely moving the needle every year. Yeah. The worst year, again, that's what you see here is down negative eight and a half when you adjust for inflation, the best year is plus seven. So it's a pretty tight range, relatively speaking. And right. then weighed the average wage inflation for 52 years, point, let's call it 0.2%. Yeah. The other thing that I think this is, a, this just pops in my head as a really good point is that when you're buying homes, you don't buy for appreciation, no, right? You shouldn't you be. buy for cash flow because appreciation goes up and down and up and down over time. And when you adjust for inflation, as you can see in these numbers, it's really not substantial, right? On an inflation adjusted basis. If you can buy homes where you're forcing the appreciation, you're making them much more valuable, mm -hmm. kind of that Burr method, whether it's in singles or small multis, that's where you're kind of getting your appreciation. But over the long time, buying for cash flow um, and then letting appreciation kind of does what it 
what it does Mm -hmm. is, is really a better um, way to grow income and to become financially free than to bank on mass appreciation in any one to two to three year period for sure. Yeah. And then the last thing we'll say on this for me, it's not never been about appreciation. It's not in my spreadsheet. I don't care about 1% a year, but remember what does residential lending give you? 30 year fixed rate debt. What do we know happens? Inflation. What does that mean? Rents go up and as rents go up more and more of those dollars fall to the bottom line, far more interesting. My bills are paid because of cash flow, not appreciation. Yes. And your equity growth is coming as a result of that mortgage pay down that other people are paying, mm-hmm. which does create real wealth, real appreciation through equity, through mortgage pay down. So continue to buy real estate, um, buy cash flowing real estate. Don't do deals right now, now where they don't cash flow, hoping that appreciation is going to be them, make them worth much more in two years. That's the mistake that I see so many people making. Yeah, folks, if you are overpaying today because you have some Airbnb model or some unwise assumption and your only answer is you need a perfect storm to win, don't do the deal. Don't right. ever bet on appreciation. Nobody in my course or followers, you should know the term no alligators. Don't yes. buy or create alligators. I created an alligator by taking too much cash out. Don't do it. It's painful. Just let the cash flow build. Let the equity be paid down. Let let rents go up and you will be fine. It's slow in the beginning, but when income snowball kicks in, it's very, very powerful. So Anna, how can people find you? Great. You can find me here every week. You can find me on my playlist. You can find me on social at Anna Kelly, REI Mom, on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And my website is reimom.com. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you.